Wait, so Thrive is doing what now? Hey guys, John here from Unbeatable Tech and a brand new plugin from Thrive Themes developers has just dropped today. I wanna give you my first impressions. I'm gonna share with you three amazing things this now makes possible or three pros of this new plugin, as well as three concerns or things to keep in mind as this develops in its public beta in this video. Let's go ahead and dive in. So I just watched Bradley Stevens release this new plugin called Thrive Automator. And the best I can understand it, it's essentially becoming a Zapier inside of your WordPress dashboard, allowing you to connect not only your Thrive plugins together with each other, but also connecting Thrive to WooCommerce or Thrive to ActiveCampaign or Thrive to any other third-party uh, development plugin or software as a service down the road. It's a huge undertaking. It's a massive attempt at building this out. And I'm super stoked for it as a Thrive um, like fanboy, I guess you could call me. But I also do have some concerns. I want to share them with you in this video. But if you have not watched the unveiling yet, I'll just quickly scroll through the uh, sales page of this Thrive Automator. It's included for free. Well, not for free. It's included in the Thrive Suite membership, which is like $19 a month, which is like insane. You would pay more for just Zapier for the base level than this entire suite of tools. So it's a fantastic value uh, if you're on a budget, which we all are, let's be honest. But let's kind of uh, scroll through with what this is, and then I'll give you my reflections and my uh, opinions of it at the end. So Thrive Automator is going to help you uh, make your website much more unlimited. In, if you've ever been in those situations where you're trying to connect all these different tools together, you've got WooCommerce over here, you've got your email marketing over here, you've got some quiz builder, third-party plugin over here, and then you've got your Thrive page builders over here. It's like, okay, you're, you're playing that jigsaw puzzle. What pieces fit together and which ones don't? And where do you need glue? Where do you need to do manual processes? Where do you need spreadsheets? All that is the digital marketing world we've all been in for a long, long time. This creates the ability to glue things together with an if this then that type of um, you know logic train where it says hey when a user completes a free lesson in this course of thrive apprentice then start an ultimatum campaign in thrive ultimatum that's connecting both thrive tools together which is super cool and it can make a very tight integration a tight holistic feel in your website but it can do other things than that it doesn't just rely on thrive plugins it could create triggers one day, let's say between WooCommerce or LearnDash or WooCommerce and ActiveCampaign or WooCommerce and uh, Thrive Architect, for example, or a ton of other setups here. So it's pretty powerful. It's essentially, if you ever use any sort of third-party integration tool like IFTTT or Zapier or Integrately or Integro, Integromat, whatever, there's a, a new one every day. Here's another one. That's all we needed, right? So as you can see, I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic here. There's a lot to be excited for, but there, it does cause some concern. And I'll, I'll get into that in just a second. Here's a big thing here. Built to be developer friendly. Because here's the thing. Uh, Thrive has a lot of great tools, but it, obviously it can't be all things for all people. So you do need to rely on that third-party ecosystem. And so by making it developer friendly, uh, you'll be able to start seeing more and more integrations, more and more tools that already do hook up and they can go right into Automator or it'll be a drop down where, hey, what tool do you want to integrate? Boom, it's right there, right inside your website. Super exciting. This is a public beta, right? So what that means is that they're going to need our help to shape Thrive Automator. Uh, they allow you to give some feedback, make some ideas of what they want it to be, what integrations you need, what bugs you're finding, if you're finding any bugs, things of that nature. And um, that's what it's all about, right? So as we mentioned here, Thrive Suite is now not nine plugins. It used to be nine plugins or tools, I guess you'd say, because there's a theme as well. And now is a 10th edition, which this one is kind of out there. Like it's all over the place. It's, it's, it's cool. It's, it's a little scary, but it's not just about conversion focused websites anymore uh, because now it's actually creating this holistic website hope marketing strategy where tools can talk to each other and it's not no longer the biggest concern that Thrive has had about being kind of like a closed system. So pretty powerful stuff. I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts right now. All right, so Thrive Automator brings us a whole new Thrive themes. And what I love about this is they are systematically quieting the haters. They're finding all, they, there has been some negativity 
around Thrive Themes over the years, and I'll talk about that in, in just a second, but they're, they're systematically taking one by one all the complaints that people have against their ecosystem, their coding, all the stuff, and they're eliminating it. Like number one was that sometimes, you know, Thrive Themes can bloat your website. Well, they essentially eliminated that in the last couple of months with their uh, project Lightspeed, which that deserves its own video on, on its own, but that essentially makes Thrive load super quick, lightning quick. My, my website is loading in well under a second at this point and is getting great scores across all the Google page speeds. So super happy there. And then the second thing was, well, it's not developer friendly. You need to go work through all these hoops and Thrive needs to have their own special developer integrations with you, uh, which has created an inability for having you know, third-party elements in Thrive Architect. It's made some of the interfaces customized, which makes them really user-friendly, but not developer-friendly. And so this looks like their approach to make it uh, make their entire ecosystem more developer friendly. So y'all like this is the sign of a developer who actually does listen in on what people want and they're building it and they're making they're, it's making it harder for you not to like them. <laughs> so I'm very impressed with them on doing that. It's now also creating a more holistic marketing management system where it's always been a struggle. If you've got some tools are integrated through Integrately, some tools are integrated through a direct API elsewhere, some tools are integrated through WP Fusion, there's all these different ways of adding connections. And on an optimistic note, this could make a bit more of a holistic way where you'll need less tools to get the same job accomplished. Uh, but also comes at a con we'll talk about in a second if it doesn't succeed. So this is great though, if you are a WordPress user and you wanna keep your website kind of as your home and all your tools, you, you're trying to connect less to all these different uh, third-party software as a service and have all these different logins, all these different passwords, all these different you know security concerns, then this creates a bit more of a holistic uh, solution for you and your uh, online business, which is pretty exciting. And then lastly, this could enable you to save a ton of money on integrations over time. So like I said, there's a big market out there. It's going away because people are getting better like this, uh, but there's, there's historically been a huge market of, hey, I know that, let's say, just say Divi and LearnDash don't integrate. I'm, I'm using that as an example, but there would be a problem there and some developer would come in and build a solution that would connect tool A and tool B together and they would put a price tag on that and they would make some money by creating this bridge between two niche tools inside the WordPress ecosystem. Uh, that it's, it's really tricky. You don't want that. That's not good long term. It adds a whole lot of complexity to your system and customization. You don't want that. So by having this, it over time could potentially be that replacement for Zapier, that replacement for Integrately, that replacement for whatever other third party tool you're spending on and you know, simplify and consolidate your integrations into a single home, a single house. Exciting. But it's not all sunshine and roses. I've got some questions myself, and there are some things I'll be looking out for as I'm testing this and putting it through its paces. First and foremost, I think we're all wondering this right now, is site performance. My gut feel is that they're going to take this kind of the route of fluent CRM, where it's not going to all live in your table, so it should have minimal impact, but I don't know that yet. We will be di digging in and understanding how that works. But it would be silly of Thrive, in my opinion, if they just spent all this effort, all this marketing and all this development costs in making the websites faster, better for Google, better for everything. Uh, and it's blazing fast on the back end in the dashboard is very fast. It would be silly for them uh, to do all that work on performance and then kill their performance with the next product they released, right? I'm pretty sure they're, they're smart guys over there and gals. So uh, I don't think site performance is going to be an issue, but we will definitely take a look for that. Next thing is, and this is my biggest concern, is just making sure they can keep their focus. You know, now they've got 10 tools, which not all of them require the same amount of, you know, tender love and care, but I want to make sure that they don't spread themselves too thin. I want to make sure they're, they're giving more value than I believe really expensive funnel building software is out there, hint, hint, and, and they're keeping their prices extremely affordable for the beginners. So I'm just hopeful that they, they their financials are strong, everything's working well, that they can continue to support a growing library of things in their portfolio. But I, I believe in them. I think they've got it under control. But that is definitely a concern with something as large of a scope as a Thrive Automator. And lastly, is the concern of creating integration confusion, right? So if you already have integration solutions out there, now you've got another decision to make. Do I need to use this tool? Or if I'm going to use it, where do I draw the line between using Thrive Automator and another webhook tool? 
whatever the case might be, it could create some confusion. And my gut feel would be, uh, and my suggestion to you, you can install this to your website, see if it's working, see how it's working on your side. But remember, this is a public beta. This is not something to go all in on or to dump whatever tool you're using. If you've been paying for Zapier for three years, don't stop paying for it right now. Let's get in, let's understand a little bit, and let's make sure we help Thrive succeed by being very active in their feedback section. All right, so on the thrivethemes.com slash automator, uh, you can go and take a look at the page we just looked at on this video and be involved. Let's help them succeed because they are seriously trying to make it easier and more beautiful and more customizable to build conversion-focused online businesses. So that's a quick little first look. What do you think? What is this blowing your mind or are you thinking that it's going off in the wrong direction? I'm curious. Let me know down in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.